I don't know if y'all are familiar with the legend of the Kayumari. Like, um, it's an indigenous tribe and they were scarce on food, water, everything, right? And then they came upon this blue deer, the blue deer that signifies, you know, knowledge, wisdom, that led them to the path of success and like a rich life. So he provided, led them to like sun, the food, the wind, everything that was, you know, able for them to like nourish their lives. So we want to be that Kayumari to students here in the university, and not only the students here, but the people, the individuals around the community to help guide them. It's not about us producing a teacher that we think would be best based on our preparation. It's this shift to how can we use the collective wisdom of our community to increase our capacity to meet the needs of the learners. And when we do that, look to the edges, look to the margin to see which learners aren't we reaching and aren't we serving. And the whole idea of student voice, helping people like me understand what are the barriers, or as they use, tripwise, to going to university? And it came down to three. The first one they call birthright. In other words, if you were a first generation university, or aspiring first generation, you may not have the mentors and the structures in place to be successful. The second one was around financial barriers, and here in Laredo, the whole notion of investing in education, at the same time considering keeping the lights on, or keeping food on the table. Sometimes it's a very big dilemma. And the last one is readiness. And this really got us to start to think about, well, before you're actually at college, what do you need to have mastered or achieved or put into place to be successful or on the track to getting to college? The, the, this dean is uh, the most sophisticated um, curriculum developer that I've ever been around. I mean, he understands curriculum, is able to, you know, really help us and lead us in ways that um, get us to think about all these things. We want our students to go in and eventually become leaders in their schools and hopefully change the schools in ways that, um, that are much more geared to the communities and families that they serve. You have to look at the Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? You need to make sure the students are healthy, well-fed, and, and they, they have a, a very good um, social-emotional disposition to learn. And that's what we really focused on, you know, looking at the holistic child, looking at, you know, what can we do for the family? And so that the child is happy, the family is happy, and the teachers, you know, are, are going to have a student that is ready to learn. I had a good relationship and continued to have a good relationship with the dean. And he was approached by some individuals in his intro to teaching class about the Taffy chapters that they had in high school. And they were wondering, is there a Taffy chapter here at TAMIU? And he said, no, there's not. So there was the opportunity right there to start something very special that had never been done before on this campus and really in the A&M system. We would need the, the student voice to be the catalyst for this growth of this program that's going to be hopefully in place long after these individuals have graduated. And that's one of the whole purposes of Taffy is to mold future educators and then have these individuals reach back to where they came from and serve as a guide through the pathway or pipeline of their educational journey to kind of get through obstacles or trip wires that they may have experienced so future generations of edu educators don't have to go through some of those hardships. I mean, I was stunned at how well prepared these students were. And it turned out that these were Taffy students, that is that they had been doing this since high school. Uh, and then they come in and they're really, really well prepared. We're an international university. We want to give our students the opportunity to be able to go anywhere in the world and our teachers and say, hey, you know what? I, I can recognize um, this teaching strategy here. I can help you with that. I can relate to this student because you've you've really had that foundation here. 
but kids will even come up with their own ways of doing things. And there's, there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. We should celebrate that because it's creativity, it's, you know, ingenuity. Most of my parents were born and raised in Mexico. Their first language, well, their only language I can say is Spanish. My dad crossed the river to give us a better future, you know, and those are the things I keep in my heart forever. When I was in high school, I didn't know what FAFSA was. I didn't know I had to apply to a university. I didn't know how to do all these things that were just like, here, this is all you have to do, you know. And that's something I want to do when I become a teacher, you know. I want to have everybody, like, you know, I want to have a classroom that's very inclusive, regardless of where you come from, regardless of your background, whether you have it all, whether you don't have it, you know. It's something that, well, the moment you step in the classroom, we're all equal. My biggest, my biggest question was, Mom, how are we going to do it? Like, how is it that we're going to cover all these costs? I have to pay so much. Also, being a first-generation student, it was very difficult because I was really confused with the whole steps, the whole process, financial aid. I didn't submit this paper on time. Am I going to get the same amount of FAFSA? You know, the college application, what does the school look like? Do I have enough to pay for the dorms? Everything, like, it was a massive amount of information that... In my brain, I was just like, where do I even start? Where do I even look for these answers? So I feel like Taffy, we provide, we want to be that hope, that esperanza for students and provide that support for them as they transition from high school to college. And, you know, like mentioned before, like help them to see if like education is their calling, if that's what they want to do. I am a first gen, so my parents had no idea. Um, they don't speak um, English. They understand it, but there's some things that they don't understand or they don't understand how the system works, how the application works, how for everything, for FAFSA, for um, the university. So I was on my own and it was difficult because unfortunately, sometimes the counselors wouldn't help. So you had to figure it out on your own. And thankfully I had friends and an amazing teacher that guided me through that. In the high school, they, they offered um, dual credit and gold program, which are college classes for free. So I took advantage of those classes since I wasn't, I'm not from money. So I needed like those free classes. I took advantage of them and I took any possible advantage to do free classes for college to get me ahead to finish. And so you start to ask the question, what if? What if we started to ensure that anyone at any school had access to peer mentors with a clear indication of why I'm doing this, where I'm going, and how I'm going to get there. What would that mean for the teacher pathways in Laredo? So the more I understood the needs of this community, I started to recognise that the TAFI chapter, or this Texas Association of Future Educators, provided this peer network and peer support to elevate, one, belonging, and I've seen now that the students travel up to Laredo from up and down the river. Having that connection to that community and a feeling that they belong is important. This is where inclusion comes in. And for us, inclusion is the inclusion of voices, which includes the students, their families, the teachers, the school counsellors, all the folks that can help us better understand the needs of the students and how we can provide the, the support they need and the enrichment activities they need at the time they need it most. We're pretty happy that around 90% of our students graduate fully certified. A lot of times when we refer to multiculturalism, everybody thinks about race and ethnicity, but it's well beyond that. And having individuals that are going into the educational field, it's important that, um, that we instill in them that that includes gender, sexual orientation, disability, whatever it may be, it's, it's a broader idea of what an individual can be. And knowing that that's who they are within the classroom and you're meeting that individual's need is something important that we need to share with these future generations of educators so they can continue to share that and communicate that with their students. We look at it as an arc of experience that uh, our students have really starting in as low as uh, middle school and high school with our uh, Taffy students. Here, you know, in Laredo, about uh, 
In most of the schools that we serve, there are anywhere between 50 and 60 percent of the students who are, who are labeled as um, English learners. Uh, here we prefer the term emergent bilinguals to, uh, to honor their bilingualism. Um, and we prepare our, our teachers for these emergent bilingual uh, children. Um, so we have in, instituted um, a kind of a, um, a way of following the students as they move through our programs to see where they are, uh, what they're having difficulty with on the exams, uh, to provide them support for those areas and to get their scores up to a passing um, uh, score on each of those exams so that they can move through. And that's really our, our, our goal here. Um, we want to prepare the best uh, teachers that we can to be culturally relevant, culturally sustaining, language relevant, language sustaining, bilingual, uh, knowing the communities, knowing the families, uh, working in schools that they come from. Once we came to TEMU, some friends and I decided to initiate it here. And since most of us had been involved in Taffy before, we were like, why not bring Taffy to TEMU? It's very rewarding to see that there's other peers that think the same way that, that you do, that they share the same values as you do, because teaching isn't just babysitting. There's so much more into it. You're basically raising the future. The amount of community service and how we help students engage with the community and the people around them, I think it is a great opportunity as well to, you know, form relationships, create friendships, you know, open more doors to yourself and like you, the people around you. We want to encourage students to go and try substituting. In sub substituting, you're actually going to the schools, you're meeting teachers, and you're getting to work uh, to see how, like, meet people within, within the administration, administration, the principal. And once they get to know you, you can see how great of a substitute, or how great of a teacher you're going to be. It's going to be like, hey, come work with us. Or like, hey, I want to hire you once you graduate, once you have your certification, come work with us. My junior year, that's when I competed the first time. So competition is a big event in Taffy where you go, there's like certain levels, regional, state and nationals, where you go compete in certain events that are events mimicking or giving you scenarios that teachers go through every single day. So it gives you the practice and the experiences that teachers get every single day. And it, give, it provides you better skills, your presentation skills, meeting other people, building connections. Uh, me and my fellow um, officers or my friends, we ended up creating this organization here at TAMU, bringing this taffy to make it feel like a comfort zone at the university because it's such a grand um, transition from high school to uni the university. So it was a great way to bring that in. And as well as taffy in high school, it taught me a lot about um, patience with kids, um, how to build a lesson plan, um, how to speak with uh, publicly how to have that courage that I didn't really have that I built through Taffy in high school and brought that into the university. And so what we're starting to look at here is ensuring access to highly effective first educators, which is typically in the rate of a parent and aunt. There's some that do pre uh, early head start. We need to make sure that we have that pipeline of teachers that come through and return to the neighbourhoods if we want to have a quality teach for all in every corner of Laredo and the surrounding communities. We need people from those neighbourhoods to come through the pathways and return to the neighbourhoods. I said at your job as a teacher, there's going to be a lot of things that pop up that, I mean, four-year program, we teach you as much as we can, but it's only a fraction of the things you're going to deal with as a teacher. So you have to be good at solving those problems, finding answers on your own, but then you have to teach your students how to do that as well. And so what you'll see here at TAMIU is the idea that we provide opportunities to cultivate educators by positioning mentors and supports along the way in the journey. 
And they're opportunities, they're invitations really to make a decision. We'll provide the challenge and also the support, but it's up to you to really take that option, make that decision about what you're going to do with that opportunity. Despite your economic status, your race, your gender, wherever it is you are located, there is always an opportunity to succeed. There is always a door, there is always a path. Just look for it. Don't stay in a spot where you think, it's going to come to me, somebody's going to come and ask me if I need it. Go out there, don't be shy, you know, don't be scared. Even if it's your first time, like someone will be willing to help you, someone will guide you through it, but there's always a way. Like, don't stay stuck in one spot. There will always, where there's a will, there's a way.